Hi there, my name is Kathleen Shearer and I'm the Executive Director of CORE, which is the Confederation of Open Access Repositories. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to be here at CNI, well, virtually anyway, along with my colleagues, Martin Klein and Paul Walk. Um, we're gonna provide you today with an overview of our recently uh, launched project called Notify, the Repositories and Services Interoperability Project. CORE is an international association with uh, over 150 members from 50 countries around the world on all five continents. And our aim is to enhance the visibility and application of research outputs through collaboration across the global repository network. Next slide, please. So through a whole range of different activities, CORE has been working um, to increase the value of open access repositories since uh, the organization was launched in 2009. Particularly relevant to this project is some previous work we've done around um, the future visioning of repositories. <clears throat> so in 2016, CORE launched the Next Generation Repository Initiative, which articulated, I think, a really important foundational vision for repositories that really guides much of the work that CORE um, uh, does today, uh, including the Notify project. And the vision is to position repositories as the foundation for a distributed globally networked infrastructure for scholarly communication, on top of which layers of value-added services will be deployed, thereby transforming the system, making it more research-centric open to and supportive of innovation while also collectively managed by the scholarly community. And the project brought together a group of technical experts from different domains and regions. Um, they developed a number of user stories that really kind of describe the desired functionalities or behaviors uh, for repositories of the future. And then we identified 19 technologies and protocols that would support those user stories. Following on that work in 2019, uh, CORE published the PubFair paper, which grew out of a European Commission project proposal. And it kind of brings together a lot of the functionalities described in the next gen repository work, but more into a, a cohesive conceptual model. So PubFair is described as a modular distributed open source publishing framework, which builds upon the content contained in the network of repositories to enable the dissemination and quality control of a range of research outputs, including publications, data, and, and other types of research outputs. Um, unfortunately, the project wasn't funded, so uh, we decided to go ahead without external funding to really advance one specific aspect of, of, of this work, which is connecting repository contents with uh, review services. And critical to all of this is the principle of a distributed environment, um, which is kind of contrary to what we see today where a few publishers are really controlling a lot of the scholarly communications landscape. So distribution of content and services, um, we believe will support inclusion in the system. All repositories who wish to will be able to participate it will allow us to support um, a diversity of needs across the global and multidisciplinary communities and also reduce the risk of a single point of failure or commercial buyout. Next slide, please. So one key aspect um, to this distributed model is how repositories will connect to other value added services. And that's what the Notify project is all about. Uh, we launched the project in January of this year, 2021, and we're working with a number of implementation partners to develop a standard and interoperable approach that will link reviews and endorsements with research outputs in the distributed network of preprint servers, archives, and repositories. And our implementation partners represent a mix of repositories, preprint servers, and review services. Next slide, please. So uh, I think it's important to note that the technologies in this model can really be applied to a huge range of different types of services and use cases. 
but um, for the for the sake of, of this project, we're really focusing on linking repository resources with reviews. And that's because there's been this huge rise of preprints during the COVID-19 pandemic. And there's a really uh, strong interest right now in the community about um, how we can link preprints with peer reviews in a standardized way. Um, so on that note, I'd like to turn it over to Martin to provide some more details about how all of this will work in practice. All right, thank you very much, Kathleen. So I'd like to take a few minutes here to further introduce the Notify project by means of uh, describing an example use case that at this stage of the project is uh, squarely in the scope for, for Notify. Um, I would also like to highlight the in, uh, interaction between the parties involved in this use case. Uh, as uh, visualized here on this slide, uh, on the left-hand side, we see uh, parties involved such as um, uh, preprint services, and uh, repository platforms, so basically uh, publishing entities, if you will. And uh, on the right hand side of this slide, you see review services such as pre review, eLife, Publons that offer their peer review services uh, on the web. So this use case is really about a publication platform, let's say a repository um, that hosts preprints, uh, requesting a peer review on this preprint uh, from a, a party. Uh, visual or displayed here on the right hand side of the slide. So for example, from uh, preview or Publons, right? So let's maybe make this a little bit more uh, concrete. I have picked two examples for each box uh, to uh, go through the interactions in this use case and to also highlight the benefits that each party can take away from uh, being part of this uh, workflow, if you will. So on the left hand side, we have our DSpace repository platform. On the right hand side, we have a review service pre-review that are all now uh, ready to go uh, and request uh, peer reviews. So the first thing that these two parties need to do is to establish uh, and implement a little bit of uh, software basically to uh, foster um, uh, notifications being sent back and forth for the sake of communicating between these two entities. Our communication and notify is done by means of sending notifications, specifically linked data notifications between participating parties. Being able to send and receive linked data notifications implies that each party has, uh, of course, the capability to receive notifications, but also has the capability of uh, sending that notification. In order to receive a notification, you need to be able to have an inbox uh, that is, according to the linked data and notification specification, uh, discoverable on the web. So let's assume uh, each of those parties have that capability. And let's further assume uh, that the DSpace repository on the left hand side hosts a preprint that is identified with the URI, URIP in this case. So now the DSpace um, repository wants to request a review on this preprint from the pre review service. So what it does is it sends a notification, a linked data notification uh, to the preview uh, service and indicates in the payload of this notification, of course, the URI of this uh, uh, preprint and saying, I would like you to review this preprint identified uh, with the URI P. So receiving this notification on the preview end probably triggers some process where the uh, service considers, can it actually uh, accommodate this request? Can it do the uh, review or is it maybe at capacity and can it not uh, uh, um, do this review? For the sake of argument uh, in our use case here, let's assume pre-review is willing to do the review and would then send an acknowledgement notification back to the DSpace repository indicating, okay, that's fine. I accept your request. I will be doing this review as requested. So at this stage already, now both parties can establish some sort of bi-directional linking and can provide further information about their resources, right? On the one hand side, the DSpace repository can indicate that its, re its preprint, uh, the preprint that it hosts is currently under review uh, by the pre-review service uh, on the right hand side of this slide. The review service, on the other hand, can say, I am currently uh, under, uh, uh, do, conducting a peer review of the preprint hosted at the DSpace repository over there on the left-hand side. Right. 
So eventually, of course, the uh, peer review is done, is conducted, and the pre-review service publishes a resource on the web that represents the peer review, and it has an, a URI, let's say URI R, for the sake of argument. Upon completion of the peer review, the uh, review service will send another notification to the DSpace repository, informing the repository about the completion of the review, the existence of the web resource, and the uh, corresponding URI, URI R in this case. So now the uh, preprint, I'm sorry, the uh, repository service knows that the uh, peer review exists and it is accessible on the web uh, and it's identified by URI R. So at that stage, uh, the DSpace repository could, let's say, update, for example, the landing page uh, representing the, the preprint and uh, state that the preprint indeed has been peer reviewed, the peer review is complete. Uh, and even more so, it could link to the created resource hosted at the pre review service uh, that represents the peer review. Right? So now we can connect the preprint and the peer review. On the other hand, the pre review service can do the same thing. It can, uh, uh, as mentioned, publish the peer review uh, identified by URIR, and it can indicate that this peer review is based on the preprint identified by URIP hosted. Uh, at the DSpace uh, repository platform. So now we can really establish bi-directional linking between both parties uh, uh, playing uh, uh, in this use case uh, for requesting peer review, conducting peer review and notifying each other of corresponding process. All right, so the notify, uh, notify project and this underlying model really um, fosters interoperability between individual parties on the web. So we have our publishing platforms, repositories, preprint service, and the like. And we have our, uh, uh, let's say, value-added services, such as uh, peer review services on the other hand. The model utilizes a widely adopted uh, standard web protocols, such as linked data notification, as I mentioned, and also activity streams too, as basically a vocabulary for the payload of those notifications. Given the util utilization of these standards, the implementations are really agnostic of uh, platforms or services. So it shouldn't matter, matter whether we're talking about a DSpace repository or let's say MetArchive as a preprint service or uh, um, a peer review service one, two, or three. In addition, uh, we emphasize that we're building on a distributed network of these uh, parties as Kathleen had already indicated, right? Uh, so our content providers or publishing platforms and peer review service are really uh, playing in a distributed field here. And that's uh, really important to us. With the use of these standards and the emphasis on a distributed infrastructure, we really believe that our model can scale, right? Uh, different parties uh, that you can envision are, uh, are in scope, can participate in the, in the project and adopt the, mo the model and the technology. Um, given that the, the technology is widely used, we'll be able to uh, lower the barrier of adoption by potentially reutilizing or reusing existing uh, infrastructure, existing code, existing libraries, let's say, right? And uh, as Kathleen also indicated, given that we're not relying on existing dependencies between parties, between services, uh, we're really increasing the sustainability because we are not banking on the fact that there is a central party uh, in the picture that takes care of, uh, of our notifications, let's say. I think it's further important to stress that the Notify model really supports a wide variety of, of use cases. Uh, one use case I just outlined, but we can think of other use cases where the Notify model would be uh, uh, applicable, let's say. We've heard of use cases where a repository platform sends notifications to an archival service uh, to basically trigger the archiving process of just uh, ingested um, uh, web resources. Uh, we can further envision uh, notifications being sent back and forth between preprint services and, let's say, uh, commercial publishers to establish bidirectional linking uh, between, let's say, the preprint uh, URI and the version of record URI, let's say. So a broad variety of uh, different use cases that we can envision uh, for the Notifier model here. So with that, I'll hand it over to Paul uh, for the next stage of this presentation. Thank you, Martin. Okay, so I'm going to talk briefly about um, the uh, the actual development project um, and what we're um, doing in terms of working with our implementation partners and, and what our intended outcomes are. So um, 
the the primary um, activity is to develop some reference implementation. So we have a um, uh, a conceptual model which is is quite well defined now. We're close to having um, our first cut of the um, actual standard that we want to use for describing the payloads. Um, in the notifications. Um, and so now we want to really begin to work with our um, implementation partners to actually develop the necessary software for um, um, exchanging notifications between repositories and, and services. Um, and the intended outcome is to have um, one or more reference implementations which we can um, point people to which will be documented um, and which will really show how this um, this uh, approach to um, interoperability between repositories and services can can really happen um, so uh, another sort of um, adjacent activity to that is to to actually coordinate um, or to provide a place where um, the people in involved in those developments can um, collaborate, compare notes um, and seek uh, peer support essentially. Um, and also at the same time, maintain that um, focus on, on interoperability, make sure that we're, we're all working to the same conventions and using the standards correctly. Um, part of that is going to involve actually establishing some um, practices and conventions. Um, we have a the standards which we're um, committed to using, but um, we believe that we will need to develop at least um, one um, vocabulary for describing um, the types of activities which will be involved in the um, between the services and repositories, um, and we may may need to develop other vocabularies in time, um, and also just. Um, establishing good practice in terms of applying those those standards um, the. Um, particular core standard that we're using is Activity Streams 2.0, and this is um, a very uh, um, broadly interoperable standard. It's it's um, uh, quite forgiving in its um, structure and in the ways in which it can be used. So we we need to um, create some uh, conventions that make it easier for people to to implement um, in a consistent manner. And finally, we need to um, engage with the um, wider development uh, developer communities involved in um, building and maintaining some of the platforms which are used typically um, by our repositories and, and some of the services as well, um, so that we can um, get the leverage of, of engaging those, those um, platform development communities if they will adopt um, Notify, then that makes Notify available to uh, a much larger um, set of uh, repository and service instances. Uh, next slide, please. So in the course of working with our implementation partners, we've identified three uh, broad use cases and we're working on developing documentation of scenarios within those use cases. Um, for the point of view of the, the Notify project, a scenario is, is more or less a simple workflow uh, which can be implemented with an exchange of notifications. Um, so the broad use cases are, as, as was previously um, described, um, uh, connecting repositories to review services, so peer review of repository based resources. Um, similarly, connecting repositories to uh, what we're calling endorsement um, services. So this would include things like overlay journals, uh, particularly when th those are represented in our project. Um, and lastly, um, a slightly less clearly defined um, broad use case, but um, we, we've had some interest from um, people who um, are maintaining services which already consume information about um, endorsements and about reviews and then make those make that information available to users in, in streams and channels and so on. So we're um, they've reached out to to us to to work with us. So we're um, certainly looking at how uh, those kinds of downstream services, which might be based on, for example, aggregations of review events, which have happened between repositories and review services, um, how those aggregations can be um, 
built through a, um, an asynchronous notification approach um, and made uh, useful to, to end users. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so the, the specific outcomes that we're looking for or outputs from the project. Uh, first of all, there's, there's um, validation. So th this, this project will serve as that um, sort of central um, hub for um, validating the implementations which people will be building um, and have already started to work on. Um, it's possible that we will build a technical validation service. Um, we're not quite sure if that's necessary yet. Um, there are available components for validating uh, linked data notifications in general. So some combination of technical um, validation processes and just community validation of, of what people are doing um, will be a, an important part of this work. Um, we're still figuring that out at the moment. Um, the community conventions that I alluded to earlier, and uh, we've already started um, work on the um, web documentation for, for this. Um, and I'll be able to show you a picture in a moment. Um, and documentation of the vocabularies, um, which we believe will need to be developed to, to support these use cases. Um, some kind of shared knowledge base um, relating to the technical implementation. Um, we imagine um, that um, implementers will discover um, common problems and common um, solutions indeed um, in terms of actually implementing the, the software required to make Notify work. Um, there are already um, available open source libraries of um, uh, code which people can use and um, we will make sure that um, people have um, um, information about those and the links to those and then we'll be, um, I hope, gathering um, some um, information from our implementers as they work with those technologies. Um, the range of interoperable working platforms, so this is essentially the reference implementations. Now, um, our, our hope is that um, as as we gain some momentum here, then we will not only have our core reference implementations, but we'll start to um, capture information about other people who have implemented the uh, Notify technology. Um, and that leads us to the last point on the slide, which is um, the expectation that we will build a catalog, in fact, of um, services and repositories which have implemented the technology and are therefore able to participate in um, the Notify um, interoperability approach. And so next slide, please. So this is um, just a couple of um, screenshots to give you a flavor of um, how we are documenting this. The, these are already out of date, I'm afraid. Um, this is a very rapidly moving uh, uh, project, but it, it gives the, the, the right idea. So on the left, we have um, the uh, documentation of one of the scenarios I was describing, uh, essentially a workflow. Um, and we're using the swim lanes approach from um, well, various modeling um, approaches actually. Um, so in this case, the there are three swim lanes. The, the lane on the left represents, um, in this example, represents a repository system. The lane on the far right represents a review service. And the lane in the middle uh, contains the notifications between those services. Um, and then we can um, detail the notifications and explain the, the actual uh, payload that um, uh, will be um, involve mandatory properties and then possibly some optional properties um, to affect that um, that workflow. So these scenarios are deliberately quite simple. They're linear. Um, they're quite limited. Um, but this is how we we aim to achieve broad interoperability by breaking it up into the, this kind of size of um, of problem. Um, and then on the right we have. Um, just uh, an illustrative screenshot of one of the uh, notifications um, with the uh, JSON uh, payload on the right. Um, this is already very out of date, so please don't um, assume that this is the correct payload. Um, we've revised it considerably and um, the website will reflect that. But again, it's um, showing that um, each notification will have mandatory properties, optional properties, and then the, the actual JSON uh, payload example there. 
um, for for reference. Okay, and next slide, please. In fact, that's our, that's our final slide. So, um, if you are interested in following up, then um, the only URL you need to make a note of is the one uh, there, the, the the short URL there, uh, and that will contain links to to all of the activity. Um, that's um, under development as well. So all of this is quite rapidly moving at the moment, um, but uh, that link will, will give you the, the starting point to, to all of our documentation and so on. Um, or if you're interested in actually um, engaging with the project in some way or have a question, then please drop an email to um, office at core-repositories.org um and that your message will be routed to whoever's appropriate to answer it probably one of kathleen martin or myself or possibly all three of us um, but please feel free to get in touch we're um quite excited about this and we're open to um talking to anybody uh, who's interested so thank you very much for listening and um goodbye